We don't want to make the mistake of thinking that this is a class issue or just strictly a poverty issue or is limited to any sector of society. Victims in this country uh, are male, are female, are young, are old. Um, the numbers that we do know is that about 80% of folks who are trafficked um, are female and about 50% are children and it is now the biggest money maker in the world. When you put all that kind of thing together, it makes it very attractive for people who have no souls and who have no conscience, because that's what it takes to be a trafficker. One of the pimps has said, yeah, I can go to any food court in the United States, in any mall, and sit for 10 minutes and pick out who the disenfranchised, lonely young woman is, and I, I can know within the next 10 minutes whether or not I've got her. That's how easy it is for these pimps to pick up young people. But we have to address this issue from both sides. It's not just enough to pull drowning people out of the river and put them into restoration homes. It's not enough to get girls and, and young men off the street. We also have to build fences to keep people from being thrown in. And we have to address the issue of Johns and traffickers. And so it's, it's really important that we keep that perspective in mind and we look at the whole picture and not just one part of it. This is a national crisis. If there was a half a million of any other kind of crime, half a million robberies, half a million car jacks or jacking or whatever, then you know the public would be in an uproar. And so I think just meeting the girls, hearing their stories, like getting on their side of it and realizing how long the days are that they have to live this out, I just, every interview started taking my breath away.